So when we get in touch with the parts of us that really want healthy boundaries and want to move forward, do not want to stay stuck in these patterns of softening boundaries or not holding boundaries or not speaking up for ourselves. I know that story. I I have lived how hard it is to shift from a place of being a people pleaser or a, a I always I I think of myself in my early years of like whatever you want, you know? What do you want to do? I don't care whatever you want to do. That shift from being in that space to actually listening to myself and trusting that it was okay for me to speak up for myself, that's taken some time. Hi, I'm Biz Kush, a life coach and therapist and your host here on the Awaken Your Wise Woman podcast. We're talking to women all over the world who found their way back to themselves, to their inner knowing, to their intuition, to their wisest self. We're exploring how to feel alive, authentic, engaged, and fully present in your life. Let's awaken your wise woman. Hi, and welcome back to the Awaken Your Wise Woman podcast. I'm your host, Biz Kush, and uh, ex- I'm excited to be here. I'm excited that this is episode 15 of the second season of the podcast. And if you're new to the podcast, there are more than 150 episodes under the title Woman Warriors for the podcast. So we switched gears this past year and you can find even more amazing episodes. They're not more amazing. There's more of these All of them are amazing episodes, but you can find those through the link in the podcast, as well as if you go to womanwarriors.com, you can find them there. If you want to know all the updates for the podcast, for my coaching business, to work with me, you can sign up for my newsletter. Go to elizabethcushcoaching.com forward slash sign up, and you can get yourself on the list. You get a couple of free gifts with that, a beginner's guide to meditation, or maybe it's, you're not a beginner. Maybe you just want some pointers on how to get your meditation practice up and running or part of your daily life. You get that guide as well as my three invitations to come home to you. So that's a re- audio recording with some writing prompts to help you tap into different parts of yourself. So do it, sign up. You'll get all kinds of good stuff and you'll get all the newest episodes, quick summary and links to those episodes right in your inbox. It goes out twice a month and I try not to overload with other offers, but occasionally you will get other emails from me as well about my affiliates and stuff that they're offering. So let's jump in. The last two episodes, so 13 and 14, we talked about boundaries with Sharon Martin and Kristen Boyce. And boundaries are something that can be really, one, hard to define, but also so personal and can be such a vulnerable space for us. And what I mean by that is that when we begin to set boundaries, one, we're learning to reflect inward about our feelings and what our needs are. So that can be a vulnerable space. But then we need to speak those needs. We have to share what it is we need or the boundary that we need to put in place with others. And that can be a scary, frightening, uncomfortable space for many of us. And I think women in particular struggle with this more than I would say most men for lots of reasons. I think men from an early age are almost encouraged to set boundaries where women are 
encouraged to be people pleasers, kind, willing to compromise, and that can be a hard space to be in and hold boundaries and be true to ourselves. So society is part of it, you know, what we're taught from a young age, but also if we've experienced trauma, emotional neglect, abuse, and it wasn't safe to speak up for ourselves, to share how we feel, if our feelings were minimized or ignored or shamed, we really learned from the start that it was better to stay quiet. It was better to stay small because if we spoke up or if we shared, we opened ourselves up to either hurt or pain or not being seen even when we did speak up. So when we get in touch with the parts of us that really want healthy boundaries and want to move forward, do not want to stay stuck in these patterns of softening boundaries or not holding boundaries or not speaking up for ourselves. I know that story. I I have lived how hard it is to shift from a place of being a people pleaser or a, a I always I I think of myself in my early years of like whatever you want, you know? What do you want to do? I don't care whatever you want to do. That shift from being in that space to actually listening to myself and trusting that it was okay for me to speak up for myself, that's taken some time. And as hard as it it can be, because there are some relationships that I've recognized where as I began this new process of speaking for my needs, setting healthier boundaries. I recognize that there were people in my life that that didn't work, that that didn't really work. And so those relationships either changed or ended or we just moved into a different space. And that was hard. But I think even harder than that has been the shift in learning how to actually feel my feelings and trust that it's okay to feel what I'm feeling and trust that it's okay to speak up for what it is I need, what I want, the boundaries that are important to me. And I think for me, that's why the conversations with Kristen and with Sharon Martin were so impactful for me personally, but I hope too for you as an audience, because one, my conversation with Kristen is we shared how sometimes we don't always get it right. Sometimes our, whether it's our trauma responses or these old patterns of behaving, jump in before we're really fully aware of not holding true to what what we need. And that's okay. These things happen. As we grow and as struggles come and go in our lives, our boundaries may shift and change. We may be better or not so great at holding them. And that's just part of the growth. And what I took away from my conversation with Sharon Martin was that so many of us either weren't taught or we did, we learned that holding boundaries wasn't safe, but that we can relearn. We can learn how to bring these healthier boundaries back into our lives, learn to tap into what we need, how we're feeling so that we understand the boundaries we need in our lives, that that can happen we can do that work and make it happen. And that's so hopeful to me. That is such an inspiring message. You know, one, that we don't always get it right. And two, it's something that we can learn to do and get better at, which is amazing. And the biggest piece of that learning for me was learning who I needed to trust 
and the most important person was me, that I needed to trust me. So as you learn to tune in and listen to how you're feeling, really, truly listen, really be with those feelings, identify them, say them, speak them, write them, let them be there. And from there, figuring out what it is you need in those moments, in those relationships, in your life, what you need from yourself, what you need from others. So boundaries and trust go hand in hand. If we don't trust that we know what we need, it's really hard to stand firm in those boundaries. Instead, we're relying on others to set the boundaries and they don't know what we need. They don't know how we're feeling. They don't know what's happening for us. And it puts a burden on others if we're hoping that they're going to understand somehow through some psychic intuition what our needs are and how we're feeling. Like that's not fair to the people in our lives either. But we also have to trust that the people we're in relationship with are going to honor our boundaries, are going to recognize that they're important for the health of the relationship too. So for me, I can think of so many instances in my life where options were offered for, you know, big and small things, life decisions, as well as smaller sort of like, where do you want to go to eat? And really feeling as if I didn't have the power, I didn't trust myself to speak up for what it was I wanted. And through coaching and therapy and brain spotting and body work, I've come back to my core self and my values, the things that really, truly matter to me in order to help me build healthy boundaries, help me learn to speak up for myself, help me learn to have a voice in my relationships. And it took work. It took work. It took asking for help. It took diving deep and finding that trust in me, working with those parts of me that wanted to stay quiet, that were ashamed or into, that were shamed into staying quiet and helping them feel safe and secure within me so that when I did speak up, it felt solid and okay and comfortable or at least less uncomfortable. I wasn't scared. So as we learn to trust ourselves, as we learn to trust our knowing, our intuition, our values, knowing our values, what really matters to us, that builds the foundation for boundary setting. And that can be a really vulnerable process. So trust and vulnerability and boundary setting are all tied together. They're all linked in such important ways that if we don't have that foundation, it's really hard. It's really, really hard to know how to speak up for ourselves, how to say no, how to create those healthy boundaries in our life and our relationships that support us and our growth and our well being. Another conversation that I really took a lot away from was with Melody Wilding and her comment towards the end of the podcast conversation where she said that as we learn to keep our promises to ourselves, we build that trust, that foundation within. And so keeping promises to yourself around how much sleep you get at night, whether you drink too much or not, 
eating things that help you feel healthy, loving yourself, treating your body with kindness, like keeping those promises, like one of my promises to myself that I work very hard at is not to shame myself, to be kind and compassionate with me so that I can come from that foundation, that strength of being kind to myself so that I can bring that into all my relationships. And that's a boundary for myself, right? I am keeping my own boundaries within that I'm going to work hard to work with that critical part to help it recognize there are other ways to to live my life. That self-criticism hurts more than it helps. So the more you keep your promises to yourself, whatever they are, the more trust you build within, the more natural the boundary setting will become. And that's the reality. That's it. That's the thing. Boundary setting becomes more and more natural the more we trust ourselves, our intuition, our knowing, the more we understand how we're feeling and what matters to us. It's real. And it can take partnership. It can take working with a trusted colleague, a trusted therapist, a trusted coach. And that can be hard, right? We got to reach out for help. We have to ask for help. And that's not always easy. If we have learned to figure things out for ourselves, to not ask for help, not ask for anything, it can be very, 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 very hard. I'm going to say it again. It's going to be very hard to ask for that help, to help you build that trust within. I know it seems crazy, like, oh, I should just be able to learn how to trust myself. But when that foundation hasn't been built from early on, that can take some time. That can take a therapy or coaching relationship to help you recognize your value, help you recognize your worth, help you recognize how you're feeling and what you need and the parts of you that keep you stuck and why they're doing that. So I get it. I get it. I get that it's hard. I get that it can be a struggle just to take that first step. But I also know that that first step can be the first of many, many steps moving forward. And I would love If this is where you are, I would love to work with you. I would love to help you move from a place of uncertainty, stuckness, feeling unworthy. I would love to help you move into a space of confidence, of feeling authentically yourself. I would love to help you find those values that help you step forward into your life with meaning and purpose. Yeah, I would. Well, I hope that this trilogy, these last three episodes, 13, 14, 15, around boundaries has been helpful for you. I hope you've had some takeaways that really resonate within. And if you have any questions about working with me, reach out. There's a contact form on the website, elizabethcushcoaching.com. You can also, if you do, if you are signed up for the newsletter, there is always a link to reach out to me, to talk to me, to you can respond to the newsletter itself and the email gets to me. So please reach out if you want to 
feel more present, grounded, solid in the life that you're living. Well, I hope that your week is filled with joy and love and lots of feelings. I'll see you next time on the podcast. Thanks for listening to the Awaken Your Wise Woman podcast. The information in this podcast is not a substitute for seeking help from a licensed mental health professional. Music by Andy Cush, sound editing by Laura Disler, and show notes by Kathy Cush. If you'd like more information about me, Biz Cush, and the resources shared today, go to awakenyourwisewoman.com.